We all make mistakes, ones that ruin our day, maybe a week, perhaps a month or longer. Maybe we forgot to put the trash out or woke up late for work. These are stressful mistakes to make and can cause a lot of headaches, but imagine making a mistake that costs you thousands or maybe millions of dollars. Airline companies do this more often than you might think. These companies are prone to human error just like the rest of us, so one typo can cause a lot of problems and a huge loss in revenue. Or, of course, the mistake could be an offer hoping to attract revenue for the company that could be abused, backfiring completely for the company. Or it's not an airline at all, but the U.S. military that makes an aviation error that costs a huge amount of money. From business class tickets to presidential suites under $100 and the odd ticket that has no mileage restrictions, plenty of online mistakes and loopholes can give a keen plane spotter a very plush but very cheap holiday. We're going to look at mistakes like this one as well as misplaced incentives all the way through to government faux pas as we take a flight looking at the world's costliest aviation nightmares. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and comment down below to give your opinions on the most expensive aviation mistakes. In 2006, a very few opportunistic customers spotted the flight of a lifetime. Donnie Bowers was one of these people and he couldn't quite believe what he was seeing. He saw a flight to Cyprus, a beautiful island in the eastern Mediterranean, and back to Toronto for $33. Despite not even knowing where Cyprus was, he thought this was an opportunity too good to miss, so he bought the tickets. The regular price for a Toronto to Cyprus ticket on the Italian airline Alitalia was $3,900, but a clerical error on the reservation system caused the last two zeros in the fare to be dropped. Given the exchange rate on the day, that came to $33. US dollars. The error was detected, but news had already circulated on cheap flight forums and 509 people had made the purchase, at a loss of the company of almost $4,000 for each person with over 500 exploiting it, Alitalia was already looking at a deficit into the millions. The likes of Kerry Anderson, a travel blogger who has created a website around traveling on airline errors, exploited a further loophole allowing her to have layovers in Italy. Her itinerary looked like this, Toronto to Rome for four nights, then to Cyprus for three nights, on to Milan for a further two nights before heading back to Toronto. Not bad for $33. The deal was so good that she bought up sets of tickets for friends in her office. This widespread exploitation of the error added to Alitalia's woes. So what did Alitalia do? Well, they ended up honoring the tickets, so Donnie, Carrie, and everyone else were able to go on the trips of a lifetime. But it wasn't straightforward. The $3,300 fare was set up and allowed stopovers as part of a business class package. So not only did customers get a real deal anyway, they got the travel in style as well. Alitalia tried to cancel the itineraries, and after pushbacks from lawyers, then tried to block stopovers, and this was also foiled by the lawyers. In the end, after an administration error when trying to retrieve customer bookings, not only did the air company reinstate the booking, they did so by giving all these customers the option to change dates. So now the ticket had become flexible as well as plush and very cheap. After all this, Alitalia lost $7 million. Moral of the story is to double check your prices before you put them live. Our second aviation mistake comes courtesy of the U.S. government, and this is very costly indeed. It makes $7 million look like pocket change. The Pentagon commissioned a generation of F-35 fighter jets during the Clinton presidency. This consisted of 2,500 planes split into three versions at a cost of a staggering $382 billion. Lockheed Martin was the contractor tasked with this mammoth task and went on to work constructing the fleet. The Marine version could take off and land vertically. The Navy version would be designed to take off from aircraft carriers. The Air Force version would take off from traditional runways. So from the outset, this was an expensive project, but it takes money to continue serving the planes, an estimated cost of $1.5 trillion over 55 years. We're halfway through our video now, so just a little reminder to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more top quality videos on luxury. With costs like this, you wouldn't want a project like this going wrong. Unfortunately, this is exactly what's happened. Since the planes were commissioned, and in 2013, the fleet was grounded after engine issues. This was the second time in two months the planes have been grounded for the same reason. The longer the planes don't fly, the higher the price tag of the project. The U.S. military knows this more than anyone else, and were already warned that the planes had fundamental design issues and experts warned against various issues. However, the Pentagon said the program was too big to fail and had no choice but to continue the project 
despite all the problems. The engine troubles in 2013 were another addition to the list of accidents and failures, the worst being a pilot was killed when oxygen to the cabin was cut off. As of today, the planes are in service, but way behind schedule and with many limitations. The aircraft are running too hot, limiting their ability to operate in warm environments. They lack long-range capabilities, as well as the weapon systems to adequately support ground forces. And even in close combat, their limited turning capability put them at a disadvantage in a dogfight. Add this to the fact that they're just not necessary in a modern age. The volume at which the fleet were produced was designed to tackle another military superpower. The U.S. military spends most of its time tackling insurgents at ground level. So the likelihood is that assuming they have no more issues, these planes are likely to collect dust for the 50 years they were planned to be in operation. Very expensive $1.5 trillion dust. Our final costly mistake in the skies comes courtesy of American Airlines. Now the airline has $45 billion in revenue. In 1981, the company was very much strapped for cash and needed a way of cutting costs and raising money quickly. Robert Crandall, its former owner, came up with a bright idea. Why not offer customers a ticket for a lifetime of first-class flying? This may seem like a crazy idea, but the cost was $250,000, around six hundred dollars in today's money. So surely this was a quick win on the cash flow, and no one's actually going to fly as much to use that kind of equivalent air miles, right? Wrong. Very wrong. By 1994, 29 people had bought the golden ticket to the skies before AA removed the offer to the public, but at that point they were already racking up huge amounts of air miles. In January 1990, Jacques Vroom spent $356,000 on his A Air Pass from American Airlines. Vroom, a Dallas resident, subsequently accrued more than 37 million frequent flyer miles in his trips around the globe, equivalent to more than 3,890 round-trip flights from Dallas to London. Steve Rothstein was another one of the customers who purchased the pass, he's a former investment banker from Chicago that flew four times a week, which American Airlines decided was too much. So much, though, they offered to buy the pass back from him. Rothstein described the offer as a good deal, presumably because the company was hemorrhaging money from the scheme and needed him to stop flying. In 2007, AA realized just how much this was costing the company, and they knew they had to do something. Their revenue integrity team targeted the biggest loss-making operations of the airline, and funnily enough, the unlimited first-class flying pass was top of the list. Vroom and Rothstein had their unlimited passes revoked with American claiming fraudulent activity. Turns out the lifetime pass wasn't for life. Mind you, Rothstein was dishing out tickets left and right and center for people with good causes to fly. This might have been fraudulent, but also a kind act of charity at the expense of a huge company stupid enough to offer a golden ticket, which was inevitably going to be exploited. And that about does it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss a video from us.